Hey guys, you're watching Jermaine Morgan TV. I'm Jermaine Morgan. As you saw in the title, Why Squire? I want to talk about that subject today. It's really been a pressing subject for some people uh, because I've been asked a lot uh, by several people since I introduced this bass on last season of Jermaine Morgan TV. People saw me playing this bass sometimes as opposed to my warrior basses that I'm, you know, most people know me for playing warrior most of the time. I do play other basses, but, you know, most of the time I'm playing uh, the warrior basses simply because I like uh, the sound and the feel of those basses, and I like what I can get out of the basses uh, just for my sake. And it's really a good point of what I want to talk about today. So I got asked the question, why Squire bass? As a matter of fact, I saw somebody come in on a video not too long ago and they asked the same question. So I thought it'd be cool, you know, to just kind of address that subject since it seems to be something that's so a lot of people are curious about why are a lot of players kind of picking up uh, a squire bass, especially a lot of players that play more high end basses or even guys that play more boutique basses, that type of thing. Uh, and for you that don't know what boutique basses are, they are like warrior basses or any custom uh, bass like Federa or MTD or any other basses that are custom made, they're considered uh, boutique basses. So, yeah, so. Um, I mean, with me, it's not that I went to a music store and said, oh man, I gotta find me a Squire bass. For me, it's just, I like what I like. And I happened to be in a music store, a local music store one day. And I was just, as most musicians do when they go into a music store, you see a bass guitar, you pick it up, you start playing. And I happened to see um, this bass sitting in the music store. And uh, I love the sound and the feel of it. And uh, it just, the rest is history. I, seen the price tag on it it was a very inexpensive bass i'm like hey i can use another bass what bass player can't use another bass right <laughs> so i i seen it i saw the price on it i played it i loved it and i came back and i got the bass and it was that simple it wasn't a lot of thought that went into it like oh man it's you gotta have this that the other as as you would when you're spending money on a more expensive bass like a maybe a boutique bass or high-end bass or even a fender for that matter fenders can get um, expensive but when it comes to just having another base in my arsenal this base was perfect it was inexpensive I think I paid less than two hundred dollars for this base and I've made that money over hand over fist you know with this base like recording it on several projects that I've used so yes I I do work with this base I rarely play it out um, I've played it out a few times but I make most of my money off of this bass. And, and let me say this um, for the bass players that are watching or for any musician that's watching for that matter. When I purchase instruments, any instrument that I have, whether it be a bass or guitar, it's an investment for me. You know, this is what I do for a living. So I purchase it with the intention of it making me money back. You know, I like the instrument. I like the way they play. I like the way they feel. But at the same time, I don't feel like I'm giving away money if I pay for a boutique bass or whatever the case may be because I know I'm going to make my money back off of that instrument. So everything that I buy as a musical instrument, it ends up making me money back. So like I said, with this particular bass, I made money back. That little $200, I made that back several times over just by doing different session work and everything. And it comes in handy because it gives me more options of tones um, that that was another reason for me wanting to buy it not just because it was inexpensive But it gave me another option of different tones that I want to get out of basses Not that I can't get all of the tones out of this bass and my six string. I do have a, a wide variety of tones, but If you're a player and you've been playing for a while You know that each instrument you pick up and you put in your hand. It makes you feel different It makes you start exploring it makes you start thinking different when you pick a certain instrument up. And one thing, when you go to a four string versus playing a five or six string, it makes you automatically have to think different. And so that was a plus for me. I wanted a four string and, um, you know, I had a four string before I gave it away, but I wanted another four string and I didn't want anything too expensive. I just wanted, you know, something to kind of have around, especially to use for studio sessions. And this bass ended up being, for me, the perfect investment because, I mean, yeah, you got more beginner players that use these basses, but I mean, it's a very simple setup. The bass is active, and by the way, I do not endorse, um, currently I do not endorse uh, Squire or Fender or anything like that, and so this is not trying to get you to go buy a Squire bass or anything along that lines. I'm just being honest. You know, people ask me, so I just want to tell the truth. I, I enjoy the bass. 
has a great tone for 200 bucks it has a great tone i've i've seen other players uh playing this model of base the jaguar series of squire base and you, you even got the um i think the squire jazz uh the squire jazz fretless i mean there are tons of different bases and, I, and i'll say to you guys just try them out go and see what you like you know go play them in different environments if you have the opportunity to do so get them out of that bass room don't sit everything <laughs> don't sit like if you go to guitar center don't just sit in the bass room if you can get out of that room because that room can fool you everything will sound great in that bass room but everything don't sound great everywhere but uh um, this bass i've played it in multiple locations whether i'm in the studio recording or if i'm playing it out it sounds great everywhere and, uh, and like i said it was just a little 200 dollar investment for me and, and that's that's really what it was it gave me the options of different tones i can use it as my p bass because of the setup you know it's a uh uh pj bass you know it means it got the um the um the p bass pickups and then it got the jazz pickups back here so i get more options of tones you know if, if i'm wanting to get more of that p bass out So I get that option of tone. I even get the. You know, just off that back pickup. So it's really, it's really up to you what you're looking for. And I I always say that, you know, if you're gonna purchase a bass, don't go after a bass for the name or because your favorite player is playing that bass, because we go back to one of the older lessons where I talked about the tone being in your hands. That bass might sound completely different in somebody else's hands as it will yours. Um, uh, Derek Bennett is another phenomenal bass player that teaches online as well. And I see he plays a, 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 va a bass very similar to this one. He sounds amazing on it. And uh, like I said, both of us playing the, basically the same bass. We have two completely different tones. And uh, I mean, it helps that he's a phenomenal player. But it, like I said, it's, it's, the bass is gonna sound different in each person's hand. So don't just always base your purchase upon that person that you're looking up to playing the instrument because it might sound completely different to you. You get pretty close to their tone, but it's always going to be that little special touch that they have that set them apart from the rest of everybody else. So I just say that. Keep that stuff in mind when you're looking to purchase another bass or when you're looking to uh, purchase a bass, period. If you've been kind of playing on an old school bass, uh, uh, you started out playing on something cheap, and if you want to, don't just jump out there and buy something high end because you just, I mean, I've been playing cheap basses all the time. I mean, take take a look around and see what's out there, see what's available. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to uh, convince you to buy a Warrior bass. They sound phenomenal to, to me. Uh, you know, there are some MTDs that sound phenomenal. There's some Federa basses that sound phenomenal. There's tons of F basses. I mean, there are tons of basses out there that sound great. I just encourage you if you're gonna buy something. Don't just buy it just because of the name. Buy it because it's something that you want to play, something that you want to use. I mean, if I want to play this <laughs> Squire bass on a gig, I'll pull it out and play it on a gig. I, I really, to me, I don't care if it's gonna, if it's gonna make me express the way I want to express, and if this bass is gonna allow me to do everything I need to do on that gig to get the to get the job done. By all means, I'll pull this out in a minute and, and just play it. it. It's preference. It's about what you want. It's not about pleasing people. Now, when you go in the studio situations, this bass might be more ideal in some situations than this bass because some producers prefer the sound of a Fender type bass. They prefer the old school type sound. So it might work to your benefit if you're trying to be more of a studio musician to have something that's versatile uh, or at least from their standpoint that's versatile because both my va uh, both my other basses, Warrior basses, are very versatile, but from this producer standpoint they might be looking for a particular sound that these bases alone produce just based on the pickup combination and that's that might be the sound that they're accustomed to because a lot of people see they hear with their eyes so keep that in mind so these type bases might get you a lot more work just by having a fender not even you know a squire but a fender bass or whatever the case may be so if you're doing it for that um for that reason just keep all of that stuff in mind know the reason at the end of the day, know the reason why you're buying the bass. Again, don't don't buy something based on what people are telling you you got to have and all this. Buy it because it's what you want. 
Buy it because you like it. Don't, I mean, make sure at the end of the day, the decisions you make are something that you came to the conclusion. Take advice. Take my advice. Take other people's advice. Other other base teachers on here. Take everybody's advice. But at the end of the day, when you make the decision, make sure that the decision that you make is because you wanted to make it and not because you were pressured into doing it by anybody else. So I hope I've answered the question about why, um, why Squire Base uh, for anybody that had that question and for all that will watch this video and uh, like feel free y'all if you have any other questions I'll try my best I can't guarantee I'm gonna answer all of them but I'll try my best to address uh, the question I know this is something that's been going on and on since I pulled out this base and played this base as opposed to playing my uh, warrior bases I still do play my warrior bases majority of the time I'm pointing over there my base is right here <laughs> so I, I do play my warrior bases most of the time but every now and again I will pull these out for different situations and different scenarios it, at the end of the day it's great to have options it's great to have options and if you can afford it it's great to go ahead and get you something like this y'all get you something that you like that's not gonna break the bank so again I hope I've answered your questions Feel free to leave something in the comment. Yo, if you like this video, please like and share it. Share it with somebody. Let somebody know this might help somebody else, not just you. So I'll see you guys on next week's episode. Take care. I'm out of here. Peace.